Hello everyone, today we're going to be learning the 717-200 by TFDI Design. And if there's a certain phase of flight you want to learn, I'm going to put timestamps in the comment section so you can just jump ahead to whatever you want to learn with this aircraft. But we're going to start in a cold and dark cockpit. Uh, you'll need the tablets. It's going to be stowed away here, but usually when you load the plane it will already be up there. But that's where it goes if you click away from it. The first thing you want to do is go to the exterior button and we're going to go ahead and put some cones out, the wheel chocks, and get the ground power unit started most importantly. You can also open the doors. Then we'll come over and get the battery on. You'll see the ground power light illuminated here. We'll turn that on. And then we can get the gallery power on. Now if you're not using anything for the air to start the plane just now, you can leave the packs off and uh, we'll get the uh, isolation valve over to open. And then make sure you get the uh, anti-fog on for the windows. If you ever wonder why your windows fog up, this is why you'll need that on. And then we'll get some light in here to brighten up the panels. Next we'll get the no smoking and the seatbelt sign on. And then for the lights, we want to make sure we have the navigation light on, the logo, and the left and right ground floor light. And then you'll verify that the beacon light, the nose light, the landing lights, and the high intensities are off. And then if you need the uh, dome and overhead thunderstorm, those are available to you. Lastly, uh, we'll align the IRSs for now while we go load the fuel. And next we'll come up here to the auxiliary and uh, transfer pumps for the hydraulics. And we'll turn those on and then you're looking for 2800 PSI on the hydraulic display down below. So you just run that as a test. And then we'll run the cargo smoke. Cargo smoke. Cargo smoke. And then we'll go through and run these tests. Glide slope. Pull up. Terrain, terrain. Pull up. Sink rate. Pull up. Terrain. Don't sink. Don't sink. Too low. Gear. Too low. Flaps. Too low. Terrain. Glide slope. Bank angle. Bank angle. Too low. Terrain. Caution. Terrain. 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 Pull up. We'll come up here since we're using the ground power unit, we can get this on. And then the, uh, we'll just check the last thing we'll do is we'll test the cockpit voice recorder. And you'll see it illuminate green there, letting us know that it's working. And next we'll come over here and do the fuel. Now they have this neat little manager here, and this is how you add the fuel in your, your cargo and passengers. Uh, uh, you can get the uh, miles anywhere or the fuel anywhere, usually on Simbrief. We're going to go ahead and put our uh, route in here. It's about 98 miles away, and we'll use the calculated fuel that they're giving us uh, in here. You can go ahead and bump up the passengers a little bit. We'll carry uh, around about 125, and then you can mess with the cargo. I usually leave it, uh, but it all depends on what, you, um, what you're hauling and what you want to calculate in here. Once you have the numbers all adjusted and everything looks good the way you want it, you can uh, send the payload to the sim and send the fuel to the sim up here with uh, these two buttons. And now we'll program the FMC. It's kind of similar to a Boeing. You'll be familiar with it if you've used Boeing. So, today we're in San Diego, we're going to do a short trip up to LAX. So we'll just type in those airport codes. Our alternate will be Santa Ana. To our flight number, we'll make it TFDI 717. Cruise today will just be 10,000 feet. 
just under 100 miles to go over there. And we'll do a cost index of 15 and then we can initialize the IRS while we're at it too. Next we'll come over here and this is where you'll need the tablet again for these calculations. So you just come over to status and uh, from the the uh, manager it sent everything over here so we're gonna get these numbers in I start with the order of them uh, so start with the center of gravity if you don't do them in the orders sometimes uh, they won't input and we'll get the gross weight and lastly we'll do the zero fuel weight And now we have those numbers in there for the weight. Next we'll work on our plan. We're not going to really do a, a SID today. We're kind of doing a different departure. This is the Delta Company route, but we'll be taking off from 2.7. And like I said, we're not doing any of these, so we'll just insert the runway. And then we can go ahead and add the waypoints that we'll be using today. And we'll go ahead and get our star in here. I know we'll be landing, uh, we'll be doing an ILS for 2-4 right. So we'll select that. And SLI is going to be our transition. We already have it in there. But um, yeah, we're not doing a star either. But that's where you do it. Uh, just because this route is kind of weird. It's a real quick hop over there. We're not going to need that stuff. But that's where you do it. That's where you program them. Now the next thing to do is to get everything set up for takeoff. So we'll do uh, 35 degrees on the flex. We're going to take off with 13 degrees of flaps. And then we'll add in the uh, slope and the wind. The runway, there's no slope to it because this is prepared and... Uh, the uh, runways tend to not be sloped in here, so we'll just get the uh, 10 knots of wind and the outside air temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. And with that, we now have our V-speeds. So we'll go ahead and click on those to get those in there. And all that is set. Next we'll come over here and get our squawk code in. The squawk 4664. And so this is the location of the transponder. Let's keep it on standby. Here's your weather radar. TCAS test pass. This is where the parking brake is. You want this on at all times while you're working in the aircraft. Uh, but this is where it is off to the left and the right for the first officer. You can test the oxygen over here by pushing on this button. And then you can go ahead and run the fire test. Fire right engine. Fire left engine. APU fire. Fire, right. This usually isn't the order you would do these tests in, but I just want to show you where everything is and that they work, so you are able to do them. So we're going to start the APU now. So get the right fuel pumps on, the start pump, and then start the APU. Just click the button down and hold it on start and let go. And it usually takes about 30 seconds. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Notice we have the light illuminated now next to the ground power. So we will switch that on and then get the APU air on, which is to the left. We can get the start pump off after the APU is started. 
And then we can get all of our hydraulics on. We ran the test earlier, so we're getting those on. Emergency power to arm. Let me get the other fuel pumps on. We'll get the, the aircraft ready for the start now. So to do so, we'll go to the exterior. We'll remove the cones, the wheel chocks, and the ground power unit. We've already switched over to APU power. Get the emergency lights to arm. Now we'll get the uh, bleeds off and the packs. And we're ready to start the number one. You just pull this with a right click. And what we're looking for over here is uh, at N2, 20% fuel flow for the engine one. Then we will move down and start the uh, left engine fuel valve. So once we hit 20%, fuel valve goes on. And you're gonna repeat the same thing for the right engine. Again, when it hits 20%, you'll come over and set the, uh, the right engine fuel valve to on. Pretty easy to start. Uh, common mistakes is that you may have missed the uh, left and right engine bleeds, or you didn't turn the packs off, or you don't have the APU air on. They also won't start if you ha don't have the emergency power arm. So there's several things that if you don't have them on, you will not be able to start the engines. Or you might only be able to start one. So it's going to click off. We'll now start the right. All right, we have 20% fuel flow. We'll get the fuel valve on. Okay, the engines are started, we'll get the packs on, and the left and right bleeds. The isolation valve can go to auto. Then we can get the APU air off, but we'll leave the APU going until we're in the air. Now we're going to set up the uh, spoilers. We're going to arm them. Move our flaps to 13. And then we will set the trim. So you're looking for, uh, I'll show you the number we're looking for. We're going to go for 4.2, and this will turn green when it's correct. So you're just going to basically move it into that green air area there. Uh, make sure you have a button mapped for the trim so you can do up and down. You can either find the actual number in the FMC, which I'll show you, or you can just center it here. Usually centering it is the correct setting, but if you want the exact number, you can come over here to the uh, takeoff page and you'll see the stab trim there, 4.2. And so that was calculated along with the, uh, the V speeds. So you'll get it on that page. Next, we'll test um, all the flight instruments. So we're testing a rudder, full right, or full left, full right, back, and forward pressure. And everything's looking good there. Next we'll get our taxi lights on. And you can get the uh, engine anti-ice on if it's uh, anything less than 3 degrees Celsius. You can have those on. So I'm going to show you how to put a chart in the tablet. Um, this is just a chart I have and I'm going to use the Windows Snippet tool to save a JPEG of it. And I'll just save it out to my desktop for now. We'll label it that it's the San Diego airport chart. And this will come really in handy when you're doing approaches and you're just around the airport. It's pretty easy to do. 
uh, you'll have to find it in your My Documents folder. You'll find the 717 folder. Go down here to Tablet, Documents, and then put the JPEG in there, and then it'll instantly be picked up by the tablet. So now if we go to the tablet, click on Documents, we'll see it here. And you can rotate it any way you want. You can zoom in, and it's just a really cool feature to have this option. All right, we're going to taxi over to 27. We don't have too far to go at all. It's just right ahead here. And... Uh, Everything's pretty easy to taxi. Once you have the brakes off, you should see a little green rectangle around that area, and that means that you have everything set up correct. You're not going to get any alarms on takeoff. So really, you just got to remember the uh, flaps to on the spoilers, and uh, don't have the brakes on or anything, and, and you'll be good. So the, the plane's uh, pretty easy to taxi. Um, just be, you know, take it easy with the throttles. It's one of those planes that can be a little jumpy if you give it uh, a little bit too much on the throttle, so you have to be kind of careful. But as far as rudder goes, everything's pretty much normal. You just use the rudder paddle, uh, pedals. There's no uh, steering tiller or any buttons you have to switch, anything like that. Just uh, steer it and go. And we'll hold here and set the parking brake. Last thing you gotta do is get the landing lights on and get the uh, nose light on there and then we can get the left and right ground floor light off. And then we'll release the brakes again. And throttle up slowly, and or a good try to get a good lineup here in San Diego. Also remember to set the TCAS. Okay, we're lined up. Now, before takeoff, I like to set the nav and the profile button here. This is basically your L nav and your V nav. So have those set, and if they're on, they will illuminate pink over here. Now for the actual takeoff, I'm going to show you how to do that, or you're not going to use any uh, toga button or anything. You're going to throttle up to uh, right here, because we're going to do 1.41 on the EPR, this is the, uh, the takeoff uh, um, flex of 35 degrees that we set. So you'll just throttle up to that little purple marker, and then you'll be good on your way out of here. So let's go ahead and do just that. Speed is alive. Eighty knots cross checked. V one. 
rotate. V2. Positive right, gear up. All right, we'll zoom in here to the map. Now, um, I, I like to hand fly this plane for a little bit. I don't like to just uh, engage with the autopilot. And you want to get it really nicely on the flight plan before you engage the autopilot too. So we're going to make a right turn here real lightly and line up on the plan. Stabilizer motion. Stabilizer motion. Stabilizer motion. And if you hear those alarms, that is the trim. Every time you trim the plane, that alarm goes off. And that's just letting you know that the plane is trimming. So you're going to need to do a lot of that on your way out. But it's a fun plane to hand fly. Recommend uh, hand flying it for as long as you can. Just, uh, it's just good to get the practice and the feel for this plane, and uh, it's really not hard to do at all. And like I said, the autopilot, when you engage it, it tends to kind of uh, very abruptly try to get Stabilizer on the plane. motion. And, uh, so Stabilizer if motion. If you're off to the uh, line a little bit, it'll bank pretty hard to get onto it or it'll climb You know, if you're not at the right level. So you want to try to get the plane uh, set up as best as you can on the plan before engaging the autopilot because it will. It, it, it's in a big hurry to get you where it thinks you need to be. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of abrupt. But So just know that when you're engaging it. Um, so we're just, yeah, we're just gonna line up here. And remember we're only going to 10,000 feet. Coming up on our first waypoint. Once you're comfortable with your lineup, we'll go ahead and click Auto Flight, and this will put the autopilot on. Just off just a little bit so it's making a turn to line it up the way it wants, but Altitude. pretty much on there. And from here, we're just going to level out at 10,000 feet, and that will be our cruise for a few minutes. VNAV does a good job with this plane, tracks the... Uh, Altitude for every waypoint uh, manages the speed and all that really nicely. So now we'll come over to the overhead panel. Normally you'd get the landing lights off, but we're going to be staying at 10,000 feet. So we can go ahead and get the APU off though. And uh, once you go over 18,000 feet, you can get these pumps off. Uh, but we're not doing that, so we'll, we'll just be leaving them on today. But I'll just show you. Engine anti-ice can come on if uh, you're experiencing anything under uh, 6 degrees Celsius. So now I'm going to show you an approach into LAX 24 right. Now to do the descent, all you have to do is lower the number on the MCP, and once the aircraft passes the descent marker, it will start the descent for you. So it's real nice that it does that and it'll stay on the VNAV path. Uh, the main thing you just got to do is watch your speed with these approaches. Well, when you get closer to intercepting the glide slope, you don't want to be going too fast or you may have trouble intercepting it. Now we're just going to make our descent down. We're going down to uh, 2,200 feet.
by now we'd have the landing lights on and the uh, hydraulic, the auxiliary and the trans pumps both on. Around now is when you might be able to disengage the anti-ice depending on the temperatures outside, but probably around uh, this uh, this uh, level of flight we would. Now I'll show you for the approach. There's, as you can see, we're doing two four right, and uh, this is the ILS frequency. Now, sometimes it'll be filled out in here for you, and other times it won't be. But what we're, we're going to do is replace the SLI VOR frequency right now at the top, and we're going to put the ILS with the course heading. And we'll also do this for the other side, so we can start tracking this. Once that is set, hit VOR arm and it'll say VOR armed. We'll get a little bit of speed break out. And up here we have the left coming and then we'll be lining up with the runway. Now right around that turn we'll be 10 miles out from the runway so we'll put the gear down and then we'll start configuring the flaps. It'll also set your minimums. That's easy to do. The uh, knob is the uh, borrow knob there. Altitude. It's pretty big to the uh, right top of the map display. If you look at the map display on the right and right above, it's over there. You can set it there. I would just leave it at 200. It's not like uh, it's not like aircraft where you set 200 above the field elevation. You just set it to whatever you want the minimum to be. If you want it to be 200 feet, just set it to 200 feet, and it'll come off. Um, it already knows to uh, to go off 200 feet above whatever the field elevation is. Stabilizer motion. So we're lining up, everything's looking good. We'll go ahead and drop the gear. move the spoiler back and arm it. Now watch the nav button here. Sometimes it likes to kick off and I think it just turned off when we move the uh, spoiler. But make sure that stays on or you'll start to go off course and right now it's really crucial that you stay on course. So uh, watch that. That sometimes disconnects on approach. And we're lining up with the VOR. I'm not sure why it kind of has this lined up crooked, um, but we're straight on with it right now. And I'm going to show you another ILS approach too. We're going to do an auto land. I'm going to show you how to do that uh, pretty soon. We're going to do this landing first. I just don't know why it lined this up crooked, but uh, the next one it's uh, straight on, so you'll get to see that too. And then you can start to hit the approach and land button, and that'll start to carry you down the glide slope. And then when you're when you're comfortable with the visibility, you can go ahead and uh, take the plane over and hand fly it. So we're gonna now program our uh, final approach speed. It's gonna be 145 knots.
And if you want the speed, the arm on the MCP is probably late telling you this, but uh, we haven't really had to use it yet. You just right click to pull it. Same thing with the, the heading bug. If you want to use a, a specific heading or speed, you have to set it and then right click on the knob. Stabilizer motion. All right, so we're going to disengage the auto throttle. To do this, you click the button here on the side of the throttle handle, click it twice, and then come over here on the yoke and disengage the autopilot auto with the pilot. yellow button here. Go ahead and hit that twice, and then you're good. The plane is yours, and you can hand fly it in. One thousand. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Minimum. One hundred. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. We're on the ground, get the reverse thrust out. I uh, hit the button about no more than three times or the emergency reverse thrust comes on, which uh, is not really a big deal, but it's just not the way you want to do it. So. Don't hit the button anymore three times if you have your uh, reverse thrust come out in increments. You'll brake with the pedals. There's no auto brake on the aircraft. And then we'll exit here. We'll put the flaps up and the spoilers. And I'll show you uh, all the procedures after you land and uh, the shutdown on the next one. We're gonna, I'm going to now take you through an ILS auto land. Alright, so we're on a different approach. We're still going into 2 4 right, but we're coming in uh, with more of a straight on approach. And I just want to show you the procedures again for this. It's really going to be the same thing, except we're just not going to uh, turn the autopilot or the auto throttle off. So, right now we'll take control of the speed. We're going to slow down to 210 knots. Again, to get this all right, it's really going to come down to your speed. You don't want to be passing these waypoints too fast may not be able to engage the auto land. So what we'll do, we'll go over to our chart and we'll get the frequency here. Also we can set our flaps here, I forgot to mention this on the uh, approach. We're going to do 25 or you can do 40 and then it gives you the, uh, the V ref, which uh, is 146 now but it'll end up being 145 by the time we get there. So like I said, this number is entered, sometimes it isn't, so you'll have to enter it. And um, we're just going to go ahead and arm it, and that's all we really need to do there. Use some spoilers if you need to, if you need to slow down a little bit.
But if you're having trouble getting the, um, you know, reaching the localizer and getting it to align, uh, just try slowing down a little more if you can. Ten miles out, we'll get the gear down along with the slats. And see again here, the uh, nav mode turned off, so again, uh, make sure you catch that. You'll see it if you see the heading number up there, the uh, 251 appeared. Uh, make sure you notice that and get it back on course. Slow down to 180 knots. We're on the localizer. And we'll go ahead and hit the approach and land. And this should illuminate green. If you see this light up green, then you are good to go for the landing. Uh, sometimes if it's just not right, um, you won't have it green, it'll just say that it's armed. And when that happens, I haven't really figured out what you do. Um, I haven't been able to get an auto land after that happens. So uh, once you're green, all I know is you're good. But if it does light up white and say armed, uh, you, there's something that went wrong. And uh, usually it might be your speed. Go ahead and watch this all the way down. We have clouds to um, up until about 600 feet, so we definitely need this today. Good to practice these auto lands. You may, you know, may not want to use it. You may want to just land the plane yourself because that's uh, it's one of the most fun phases of flight. But it is good to know how to do the auto land, and it can sometimes even be challenging just to pull it off. And and uh, you know, even though the plane's landing itself, all the all the uh, Things you have to get right along the way, you know, because sometimes it just may not want to work. So you can be proud once you see it green there. Stabilizer motion. Then you know you're good to go. Now, um, I also want to say how I was telling you don't let the nav mode turn off, but once you have the approach and land button on, it is okay if that turns off, if you see that, um, the heading come on. And make sure you set it up with your course, you know, to match, uh, uh, it's 251 on this approach, so make sure you set the heading bug to that. But that's the only time when it's okay for that to actually be off, is once you arm the approach and land mode. So again, have your flaps configured, the spoilers armed, the gear is down, landing lights, the minimums are set, your altimeter is correct, and you are good for this auto land. Um, you just gotta manage the speed. We're, we went down to 145 because that's what our uh, calculated speed is. We have the approach lights.
500. Four hundred. Three hundred. Minimums. Continuing. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Five. And once you're down, I like to bring the throttle all the way back, if you haven't already, and activate the reverse thrust. And then I'll start to use the tow brake. And now we can exit the runway. Flaps come up, and so do the spoilers. And then now I'll show you the phase for after you land. Get the dome light on if it's at night and you can't see. Get our landing lights off. nose light on. And we're actually going to hold short here of 2-4 left, there's an aircraft that is about to uh, land, so we're going to wait for them. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and start the APU. Uh, I'm not sure if you even need the start pump once the aircraft has already started, but uh, I'm going to do the start pump down here and then start the APU. And then we'll turn it on once we get uh, closer to our parking, but uh, at least while we'll it started. Now if you have this illuminating over here in red, you can just hit the uh, auto flight button one more time. Okay, let's rid of that. So we have APU power now. We'll switch that bell on. We're really close to parking. You also have the thunderstorm light too. If the uh, dome light is not bright enough for you, you can use that. But yeah, that's pretty much a uh, flight with the 717. I hope it goes well for you. I'm going to park here and I'll show you the shutdown procedure. So we'll get the taxi light off, set the parking brake, the APU is on so we'll turn the engines off by cutting the fuel. Then you can turn off the beacon light, we already turned off the nose light, the left and right uh, ground floor lights can come off. There's the uh, thunderstorm light I was telling you about. Fuel pumps off, the left and right bleeds off. The packs can go off. The hydraulics. Oh yeah, leave the uh, right fuel pumps on for the APU until you get ground power. Emergency power can come it off and then get the anti-fog and the anti-ice, anti-window ice off. Seatbelts can come off and the uh, smoking sign can come off too if you want. Usually leave it on though. Get our dome lights turned down.
And to finally shut the plane off, you could just turn off the APU, but we're going to leave that going. Uh, but that's pretty much the shutdown. We'll get the uh, IRS system off too. All right, everybody, I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. hope you learned something or it helped you out with uh, some trouble you were having with this aircraft. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to do more videos with this on the channel. Keep checking back and uh, enjoy the videos I have. You guys take care. Thanks again.